time ago. I'm Margie, and I'm a hoarder. When you come into our house, you're crowded immediately at the entry with a TV still in the box <laughs> that needs to be installed. A lot of the things that have accumulated in here are magazines, books, some stuffed animals, not necessarily stuff we need, but stuff that I like. Hmm. Put that there. Lady. I'm Bethel. I'm a retired engineer, and Margie is my wife. There's three cars on the property. No, four. Let me take that back, because I forgot the Suburban. There's four cars on the property that don't run. We have about 10 cats. That number fluctuates. One horse, our dog, Macy, who is, she runs the house, and three possums that come and eat the cat food and get petted. The hard part is to be able to find some room to be able to prepare stuff because the cabinets are, are piled with uh, all kinds of little gadgets. So you have to move things around to be able to, to prepare. Our living room has the TV. Um, Bethel has a chair that he sits in. What have you been doing, Macy? Have you been a good girl today? As long as it's just the two of us, the living room functions fine. What are you working on? Crocheting those mats for the homeless. She does a lot of things for people. So, you know, if you need something done, she's there to do it. This is my plarm, plastic yarn. <laughs> I'm Shannon, and Margie is my mother-in-law. I'd like to say that they have really good hearts. I think one of the reasons they hoard things is to help other people. When Margie goes out shopping, she's not just thinking of herself. She's thinking of other people. She loves to shop. <laughs> you know, that's the problem, is her compulsive shopping. But it's not just about her. My mom's shopping is out of control. She'll go to a store and spend hours there you know, garage sales on Friday, Saturday, Sundays, whenever they're open. She loves that, can I find a deal? She will find something that, you know, maybe she doesn't need right this instant, and she'll go ahead and purchase that. Well, once you purchase that, when you bring it into the house, you've got to store it somewhere until you either use it or it sits there for 15 years. It just starts piling. <laughs> I consider myself a hoarder, yes. Not to the degree that Margie is. I can get rid of stuff, but the hoarding I have is that I look at it, does it have an economic purpose? If there's still some value left in it, I have a hard time getting rid of it because then I got to go to my bank account and replace it. I'm Jodonna, and Margie is my mother. I do believe my dad is a hoarder also. He was raised from parents from the Depression, and whatever they had, they didn't let go of it because they didn't know if they'd be able to replace it. And so that was his upbringing, and he just brought it into the marriage. So the two of them together make great hoarders. My biggest concern with the house is, is just their safety. If a fire broke out or if one of them, you know, they're aging, if she fell over, the, the paramedics would have an impossible time of getting her out. I'm very afraid that if they don't clean their house, that within the next five years, they're both going to die. With everything in the home, they won't be around very much longer.
for me, day one is always about earning trust. I'm just gonna focus on earning trust and make sure we don't have any blow ups. And otherwise, everything should go great. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. All right, big family, big crew, big house. We got a great team from Junk King. We got three extra organizers here. I think I want to start with why are we all here? And anyone in the family can answer that. Well, to uh, help my parents hopefully get this clean, alleviate our safety concerns. Uh, my mom's got a, a bad back, and uh, we'd like her to be able to get the surgery and be able to recover in a, in a nice, safe home. I say, let's just get to it. All right, you guys ready? Ready. OK, let's go. All right, so is this your fabric you use no, for sewing? No, this was or? potential, sewing. see if her daughter wants it. OK. See if Bree will I think use Bree it. Would... Bree will never wear that. So is this a good thing to donate? Yes. yes. Say goodbye to this. All right, way to go, Margie. I'm going to give you the honor of throwing it in the donate bag, Margie. Yay! We got to go into this stuff All real right, quick. this was to the VA in Clarence. It's already so sorted it's already and ready decision. to go. Here, so here, hold up, hold she up. really shouldn't be touching I know. that. Hold up. We've got mouse poop that all one over. on the top. I the rest that. of it's fine. But from a donation center standpoint, they're not gonna they're gonna throw it away because of that. And the other choice is you walk it in there and you put it in the washing machine and then you give it to them. I, that's a great theory. And realistically, mm -hmm. are you able to do that? Yeah. It'll never get done. Yes, it will. I'm not sure that Margie has really grasped the magnitude of this hoard. I don't think she realizes how much stuff she's actually gonna have to get rid of to make this house safe, healthy, and livable. I'm gonna have to put my foot down on the kid's stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, we can't donate it that. didn't, I'm not donating that. What are you doing with it? She wants to keep it and wash it. And do what with it? Peyton is. You can't let a human baby wear it. It didn't it. have mouse poop yeah. on it, okay? Matt, Jodana's already indicated it. that she wouldn't let her grandbabies wear those. If they're dirty with feces They on. weren't. They are. All right. No, they They say they are. I'm, all they're this right stuff here. is coming out with Jodana's feces just going all over it. We're saying it. You can see it. This is the part that's hard, because it's, as it's covered in mouse poop, could you clean it? Sure. But is it realistic with your time? Yes. And, and we cannot. I, the the donation centers have changed. I don't work out of the home or anything, I have the time. To you do have the time, like but you also have a 1,000 things to do. Anything that they used as their bathroom needs to go. It's got to get out. Then you might as well burn the whole place, OK? Right now. Well, and, and okay. I'm going I mean, to tell you this. When you seriously. die, that's what we're going to have to do. Well, and, and, and we, I won't be using it. You can do whatever <laughs> you desire with it, my dear. It has to go so that they can come over and spend time with you. Because right now, they don't want to. We don't want our children around it. That is why Bree and Cole won't come here. I am so mad because Margie seems to be picking her stuff over her grandkids. She doesn't care that they don't want to spend time with her. You don't want Reagan and Peyton growing up and never, ever stepping foot in your home. I mean, <laughs> Do you care? You really, no, that look right there just I, said you don't care. I see them other places, well, so it's not that So critical. do you want them growing up knowing that great-grandmother's house was so bad they couldn't go in it? Because that's your legacy right now. Bree tells everybody that she almost became the Beatle girl at school because the Beatles got in her backpack because she came over here. And don't you but, ever say it's her fault. Don't say it again because it's not her fault. She had nowhere to put that backpack. If she had a place to put the backpack, it wouldn't have been put on a bucket full of beetles. That's not how the beetles got in. It doesn't yes, it matter. Is. When Margie looks at me, when I call her out, I feel like, once again, she's shrugging off my children. She's, oh well. And I want my kids to be able to have Grandparents. <sighs> Excuse me.
I'm scared to go here, but let's just jump in and try it here. <laughs> what are the rules that we're gonna have? Is there anything that you can tell me without even looking at it, you know you can go? Like, I got a bunch of old peppers in there that are decaying. I don't want those dumped because we're gonna can after you guys leave. If it's clearly spoiled food. But that's but the problem. They, clearly it, is yes. not the... There's no clear. Hoarding 101, get a definition of what trash, keep, save, and donate is. And saving decaying, rotting food. Day two, I do not have a definition of trash. I need you to pick out something I can throw in this trash bag. <laughs> what about the old ketchup packets that are in there? I was just gonna put them in the ketchup. And that needs to go in the first aid stuff, and that needs to go back in the bathroom. This we store food in. All right, how about an old biscuit? Wait a minute, it's got biscuits in it. <laughs> how old are these biscuits? Well, just very few days. Put them in this, and then that box can go. Now, when you put them in the microwave, believe me, they soften. I think I lost like 30 minutes of my life today. This is a bottle of water. Still drinkable, or I can dump it in an aquarium. Dump it in the aquarium, and let's get rid of the bottle. I've written about Oklahoma hoarders because they're the most difficult to help. They take pride in suffering like their ancestors did. Margie didn't get mean, she just totally ignored me. Like, completely. I've been ignored by many women in my life, but not like this. I'm gonna go put it outside. I feel like she's winning, I gotta be honest. I don't feel like I'm making any progress. And there's the master of her manipulation. I feel like she's winning and I'm losing, and really, this whole family is losing. Nothing's happening. You don't need this, it's dried. That one, oh. what was, oh? It was, it's rotted food. Rotted food, it's fine, Margie. There's some grapes for the possum tonight. Oh, well, dadgummit, the possum's not gonna get fed. I think it's wild, it'll get its own food. No, they come up on the porch. Cause you trained it. They came up on their own before I ever Why did Why do you thing. think? Because the house is full of this needs to be put over there to be washed since you dumped my grapes. Yeah, I dumped your grapes. Well, like I said, the possum loves What them. is this for? Tell me why you need this. No, you need more. Oops. I got 50 of them at home. Take them out to the greenhouse for no. under my plants. You have no. stuff for under your plants, Grimmel. I need you to honestly think about why you're keeping something and think if you already have because it. Because I have a use for it, and I don't have But you're not using it. You may have I, a use. No, listen, just, listen. I Listen. just moved the plant. Yeah. Grandma, look at me. Are you okay living in this? If you're okay living in this, why are we here? What's but the point of us being here? Called. No, no, That's you because all this. of us called. I am throwing stuff away, okay? What about it makes you happy? What about this box and this stuff makes you happy? Happier than having your family over for a Sunday night dinner. It doesn't make me happier, but. Well, that's, it, well, what, that's it is. what it is. Stick that because we can't thing. come over, Grandma. We can't come over for a Sunday night dinner because you're holding on to this stuff. It is painful realizing that she would rather hold on to her stuff and not get rid of it than for us to come over for family dinners. None of that is purposeful. It's frustrating. I just don't understand why her things matter more to her than we do. Okay, you know what? I'm out. Fine. I'm out. Us? I love you. I love you. I really do. But I can't help you if you don't help yourself. Going into day three, we are going to have to totally shake this up. Start in the hallway, go straight to the living room, get everything, all the furniture, everything, and try to outmaneuver one of the best mini bladers I've ever seen. We're gonna take 100% of this room out. We're not gonna trash anything in here, we're not gonna sort anything, we're gonna bring 100% of this room to the tables outside. And then we'll sort everything out there, we'll sweep it up, clean it up, sanitize it as quickly as possible, and then we'll bring in the stuff that you want. Just gonna do it a different way so we visually see everything 
that is in this room. Because mm -hmm. it's really hard for you to make a decision on an item that's at the bottom of that pile. Mm -hmm. right? And we'll never, we, we proved yesterday, we will never even get through this pile today if we do it that way, if we hand pick it. The hard part will be, do we fill it right back up with the stuff we took out? Or do we decide to let go of some of it out there and keep this room clean? And that's on y'all. Mm -hmm. We're ready. Let's do it. OK. We don't need that. Put that back. Let's try to get rid of some of that stuff, OK? Whatever. It's not whatever. You can do Let's this. Try to not say whatever, OK? Fine, I'll rephrase it as to I'll no. go along with it. <laughs> That's the problem. Don't go don't along go with it, it. because it's not the change in the mindset. I want you to try to change the mind, if possible, OK? And I know it's not. Mm -hmm. Take steps. It's not going to be overnight. Yeah. But you've got to be willing to start. All right. We've got a lot of stuff to do here. Let's get back at it. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. We don't need that. You don't need that, Grandma. Quit digging through it. There are things like my quilt books and all that that will stay. Let's try to pare down the quilt books, OK? I'm not hey. giving in, guys. All of this is, is just from your living room only, not from any other part of the house. The reality is, is you haven't accessed this stuff probably in 10, 15 years. Wrong. the very first box, they decide they're going to keep the whole thing. The second box is office supplies, which we have boxes and boxes of already. This whole thing is pointless if we're wasting all these people's time. My kitchen aid book stays. OK, all I'm right? done. Hush! No, I'm not hushing. Hey, you've already said no. Margie. It's easy. Over. E hey, whoa, whoa, no. whoa, whoa. Margie. No. Zero productive is how that is. Absolutely zero. Please listen to me. Whether you know it or not, it's killing you. And it's killing him. And it's killing all of us watching it kill you. We're not trying to control. Yes, you are. No, no. Mom, Mom, we are not. We love you, and we want to see you around. The fact that I would like you to be at Reagan's <laughs> graduation in the current situation with this house, you won't make it. I promise. Oh, well, he doesn't know me anyway. He wouldn't miss well, me. Everybody is tired of the piss attitude you have every time you come around. And you know what? why you have the attitude? It's because of this place. Because you're always in upset what? being in this. No. Just because it hasn't killed you yet doesn't mean it won't. That's like riding around in a car without a seatbelt on. Yeah, it hadn't killed you yet. You haven't died in a car wreck yet, but you put your seatbelt on. This is the same thing. You're my mother. I love you. I have never, ever not loved you. But when I can't come see you, it breaks my heart. We've been shut out. Even if I walk out of this house when we're done with this and I never come back, I'll still love her. That, that'll, that'll never stop. This behavior is your mom's disorder. We have tried in multiple ways, more ways than I have with anyone I've ever worked with who's struggling with hoarding disorder, and we haven't had any breakthroughs. And I had to be honest with the family about this. I'm doing everything that we can, and I will keep trying. Plan today is a little risky. I want Bethel to see that he can have a space that he can live in. So we've taken everything out of that room. I'm setting up a big, nice TV. We've gotten him a nice couch. 
Maids are coming in, they're gonna clean the room. It's gonna be nice. It's gonna be the nicest that Bethel's seen this house in 20 plus years. <laughs> oh my. I've never seen this room this clean, mm. yeah. ever. Let's talk about safety really quick. All right, is this house safe? No, it's absolutely not. And I don't wanna sugarcoat it for you guys, okay? It's still an extreme fire hazard, it's an extreme weather hazard, it's an extreme trip hazard. If this room stays empty, we've got a place that I feel comfortable with a medical bed coming in. We have a space that you can recover in, okay? I've still got 100 boxes in the front yard, gotta go somewhere. Yeah. And I can fit about 20 in the sewing room. Is that stuff going back in here, or is it going in a dumpster? You got about 10 minutes to tell me. Matt and I are gonna let you guys talk as a family and figure out where you're headed because your future is in your hands right now. Y'all figured out, we'll be outside. And so we left and left it up the family to discuss. They needed to make that decision together. So you're okay with giving us permission to help you? Okay, no. <laughs> Be, being o, being okay. Uh, Are she... you willing to let them make the decisions to be able to keep this, to be able to keep the family in one room? I, I hope I don't regret it for the rest of my life, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Gosh, yeah. Margie did everything we asked. It was it enough not to finish the whole house, but I don't I don't think that's what mattered. She just straight up she showed the family that she was gonna get out of her comfort zone and she tried and she let us throw some things away. That's effort. Go ahead and take all those boxes in. They're ready to go. Being the last day, I've got some mixed emotions. The living room is actually a living room. You can live in it. Just a few things that have kind of slowed me down, seeing how much actually got back into that one room. She still brought so much back in. It didn't go in that room, but it still came back in the house. Six dumpsters, 20,000 pounds. Those are figures that I like to give. Uh, we didn't do that here. We got about 1,000 pounds of trash out of this whole house. We worked really hard for 20 square feet. Normally, with the same amount of effort, we would have cleaned a mansion. Uh, but man, we, we cleared one room. plan on doing the aftercare as a couple because it's a situation that affects both people. What I saw in Bethel's eyes, I haven't seen in a long time. He does have hope, and as long as someone has that, you're never out of the fight. I think Margie has made some big steps in allowing things to be released from her grab. And I think that's a big accomplishment for her. Hi, thanks for being a fan of Hoarders. And subscribe to A&E for more videos and click the links around me to watch more.